So first thing you're going to see is going to ask you the language that you want to set the controller in. So for this one, I'm going to set mine to English and then next. Next, it's going to ask for the time and date. So quite simpler, you're just pressing which one you want to change and doing it. So, and the same with the time here, you just change it to suit your current time and date of where you are commissioning the system. The next one, this is a new function. Uh, this is going to ask you your setup. So when you configure your dip switches to tell the system, for example, I'm using a Mitsubishi Wireless Room Start, um, I've got two zones of heating. You set them a dip to activate that. This is a way of checking that your setup is correct. So for example, here it says boiler off. So I've not got a backup boiler. Um, it says domestic hot water is on, wireless sensor, wireless room start is on. So it's saying I have activated that dip switch to tell the system I do have a wireless room start. So it's a quick and easy way of checking your setup to make sure it's set up correctly for your application before you get too far into the commissioning and then you have to power down, reset the dips, power back on again, straight away it prompts you, is this correct? As long as you're happy that they're configured correctly, we'll move on to the next setting. And it's saying, wireless room start, do you want to pair it? The next screen is showing you zone one, so that's the heating, and it's asking you what type of heat emitter you have in this application. So the first one there, that is a normal convection radiator. Second one is your fan assisted radiator. And the third one is underfloor heating. Now what will happen, depending which one of these you select, it will go into pre-configured target flow temperatures for that device. So for example, it's going to come up on the screen. If you do select a natural convection radiator, there are the temperatures you're going to be preset. Then if we select fan convection radiator, on the screen now will appear the preset temperatures. And lastly, the underfloor heating, if you were to select that, that mode, there are the preset temperatures. Click on next. And the next menu is which mode you want to operate. Is it fixed flow you want to operate at fixed 45? Do you want to go into compensation curve? So the flow temperature will um, compensate depending on the outdoor. It will fluctuate up and down depending on how warm or cold it's outside. So for example, you'd set uh, 45 degree flow temp at say minus three. Then you, the other end of the scale, you say, well, if it's 15 degrees outside, I want it to be 30 degree flow temp. So it'll always fluctuate between 30 and 45 degree flow temperature. And the other option, the room adaption mode, it will adapt the flow temperature to suit the room to get that room to a comfortable temperature as efficiently as possible. So it looks at the past history of the operator in the system, what flow temperature it's needed previously to get that room to temperature, and it will always try and aim for being as efficient as possible to get that room and maintain it at a comfortable temperature. The room adaption mode you must use with our Mitsubishi wireless room stats though. If it, it won't work, if you put third party stats on, anything like that, if you have to use third party stats because of the application, you're going to be using either comp curve or the fixed flow temperature. Next option it's going to offer us is the design ambient temperature. So this is mainly going to be where you are in the UK, uh, whether you're down south of England, whether you're the north of Highlands of Scotland, there'll be a, dis a different design temperature for the different area you are uh, in the country. I think it's fair to say most places in the norm in England would be about minus three, the design temperature we set it to, uh, but it allows you to set that there to adjust some of the subtle settings in the background of that comp curve to meet the design temperature. The next one, zone one, we, we need to tell it, this has been set up as a one zone system, so it's only offering me zone one of heating. It's saying, how am I controlling that zone one? Is it the main RC or is it the room RC one? So room RC one would be the Mitsubishi wireless room start. If you paired that as number one, it'll appear there as room RC one, which I've previously done on this system. So I'm gonna set this one is room RC one. Next one, you've got your hot water setting and your lesion air setting. There's only two settings you can do here. You can either set the hot water to eco on or off, and then the target temperature of your tank. So the eco uh, basically means it's gonna try and use the outdoor unit a little bit more economically, as in not ramp up to its maximum frequency, therefore running at lower ampage, potentially costing less to run. 
but maybe taking slightly longer to heat that cylinder. And then your Legionnaire's is either on or off, and then your target temperature for the Legionnaire's function. The next setting, you've got your flow rates. Uh, that's your flow for when the sensor is going to fault. So this first one here, minimum of 5, maximum of 100, that's the parameters where if it, if it exceeds 100 litres a minute, it'll fault. If it drops below 5 litres a minute, it'll fault. They're like standard settings, what you'd normally keep it to. And this one is your pump speed. So I'd always recommend really when you first start a system, high pump speed, push all the air out of the system, get the glycol cycled round, you know, blend it in with the water. You can always turn the pump speed down later on to suit your delta T. But to get it up and running, there's no harm in putting it at a high pump speed. Next one, we've got the boost heater capacitor. Uh, this is on our package cylinders. We don't actually use that in the UK market though. Uh, places where they get a lot colder ambient temperatures, uh, it kicks in at around minus 15. So hence why we don't really use it in the UK. So setting these up in the UK, I'm going to turn this all the way down and it says none. It's non-active. And then it says, thank you, you're complete, enjoy your Ecodan unit. It's all commissioned, ready to go. We can click on there now, click on simple, turn it on, and there we go, it's gone straight to the pre-configured settings, and it's going to operate in both heating and hot water.